Okay, so this is kind of a side project I'm going to do over the next while. This is a piece of furniture that was bought in a sale from a Georgian house here in Dublin. I'm not sure how old the furniture is. I can say that the finish on it is absolutely superb. You can see the shine on it there. And the client wants this going white. It's going into a child's bedroom. It's going to be uh, for the child's clothes. So what I'm going to do to start with, all the handles have come off. They're going to replace the handles. So I'm going to be filling up all of this. I'll probably start with a two pack filler on it. See how I get on. Ron seal, two pack wood filler. Uh, sand and sponge and a bit of water. And I'm going to basically rub the thing down. I'm trying to remove grease, wax, residue, uh, stuff like that. I love them sand and sponges. I like the way they get into the grooves and that. Um, following that then I'll dry it off. And I'm going to use this Ultral ESP. This primer has been around for, for a long time at this stage. I'm pretty sure I came across it about 25 years ago. Uh, white bond primer. No great skill needed for it. My understanding is that it's like an etch primer, that it kind of bites into that shiny surface and provides an ideal base for subsequent coats going onto it. Now, even though I'm going to use that ESP, just to be on the safe side, I'll be looking at something like the Color Trend Prime 1 acrylic, which is an adhesion primer, or alternatively the Zinzer 123, um, which is also an adhesion primer. I have the choice here of spraying it or and um, perhaps using some of these uh, next generation roller sleeves, which I find to be the finish on them to be absolutely excellent. Um, I might be a bit of bother setting up the spray. I'd, I'd more than likely hit them with the HVLP if I was going to do it. Um, I have another piece there to do. And there are another couple of pieces that are part of this lot. I'll do them bit by bit. I'm not in any mad hurry with them. So I'll, go, I'll be doing them over the next kind of four to six weeks. And sure we'll see how it goes um, but that's it so just a little update then on the cleaning down so you have this scroll work running along the edge here and what I'm doing for that is I basically have one of these scrubbers I suppose a nail brush would be just as useful this one has a handle on it and I'm using that to get into those grooves there and get it clean a little bit of hot soapy water and I'm running around all of that scroll work and then I'll come down on the piping as well and I'll clean that out as well. Same down at the bottom then around the legs. A little bit of hot soapy water, a little bit of care and attention and then I'll hit that with the sanding pad and make sure that the primer gets, gets well into that. So that's it cleaned down and sanded. Now I'm going to wash it down again, get it spotless. Then I'm going to prime it with the ESP. And the ESP says that you can overcoat it anything from two hours later to a maximum of seven days later. So I have a bit of time in which to get the primer onto it then after. As I said, I'm going to use an adhesion primer just to be on the safe side. Okay, so the unit has been washed down, sanded and primed with the ESP. It's been allowed to dry for about three hours. I've had the blow heater on out in the shed, making sure that it dries up nicely. I'm going to go at it with the acrylic prime one and see how we go. This is the unit then primed, faces of the drawers. Are all primed as well. I mentioned earlier on I gave it a wipe of the ESP which is like an etch primer. Give it a minimum of two hours before you go to coat it once the ESP has been applied. I had the blow heater running so there's a nice temperature and nice airflow running through the shed. The primer that you see on it there is the Color Trend Prime 1 acrylic primer which is in and of itself an adhesion primer. But I'm just being that bit extra careful because of the level of shine that was on these units. The finish, as I mentioned, was absolutely superb. What I've done is I've I've rolled on that primer with the two fussy blokes. This is the smooth 
uh, four inch roller sleeves with the five mil nap. I like the finish from these. Anytime I've used them, I think it looks quite good. Very little brushing required on it. The roller has actually got into um, all the intricate detail and works quite well across the face of the drawers as well. So I'm gonna leave that to dry. It'll certainly be 12 hours. I may not get back to it for another couple of days. So certainly it'll have 12 hours to dry and set up. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give it at least one coat of acrylic primer undercoat. I'm doing this for opacity and grip. I want to be sure to get rid of any of that brown color in the background. So at least one coat of the acrylic primer undercoat. And then following that, I'm going to finish it with the Fleetwood Advanced Quick Dry Satin Wood, another water-based product. The client wants a satin finish on it, and it will get at least two finish coats. I like to give two finish coats, particularly in white. It does have a tendency perhaps to maybe leave a couple of misses here and there. And I think I mentioned earlier on that I was going to be filling these holes here. You want to face that off. Now for those deep holes, I'm going to use the Ron Seal 2-pack wood filler. I like this product. I'm thinking the client is going to be putting on new handles here. I don't know the positioning of that or even what they may look like. So I want to make sure that that face is completely flush. The 2-pack will hold its position very well once I put it into these deep holes. And I'm thinking of this drawer opening and closing over its lifetime and the banging that it's going to receive and whether or not air filler will hold. So I'll do the deep parts of that with the 2-pack filler. And then following that, for facing off on this type of thing here, I'm going to try this, the 2 prey Fine Surface Filler. I have used Fine Surface Filler in the past, as I'm sure many people have. Never used this one. So I'm going to try that for facing off those small imperfections and blemishes. And in particular, I've noticed in the past is these circles here. You really need a fine surface filler for them. They tend to keep showing up through our coats. So I'll be flushing that with the fine surface filler. And I do all that filling in between coats and touch up as required to ensure that there is no flashing the current. You can see that there is a bit of damage on the face of the drawers, as you'd expect. So we want to smooth that all out and have it looking really nice. I still have the option of perhaps running a coat through the HVLP. I opted for the roller just because of the space that I have and the size of the unit. But I could still simply set up the HVLP, run a couple of coats through it. We'll see how it goes. 